dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. Israel is going through the most horrifying days in history. One conflict follows another. One sign follows another. All seem to be revealing the truth mentioned in the Bible. It was the end time. It is the day when God returns. However, one thing to note is that before he actually comes, there will be the appearance of the Antichrist. They will be like a powerful army. They will threaten your spirit in one way or another, and they will make you falter, scared, and a bit shaken. Israel holds a unique place in biblical history, being the promised land to the descendants of Abraham throughout the Bible. This land is mentioned in numerous prophecies, many of which relate to the end times. Many also link the ongoing conflict in Israel to the potential arrival of the Antichrist. While the Bible does not explicitly mention Israel in connection to the Antichrist, according to God's word, these Antichrists in the early church were counterfeit Christians who had split away from the body of true believers. They were liars who denied that Jesus was the promised Messiah. It's in the Bible who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. And the Bible warns us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Antichrists are not atheists. It's in the Bible. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. For such people, are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. Jesus also warns us, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Any will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doders. Jesus further warned that during the period leading up to his second coming, antichrists would try to impersonate him, claiming to be the returned Messiah. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or, or yes, do not believe it, for false. Messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out, or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it.
just before the second coming of Jesus, there will be a manifestation of the great and final Antichrist. But remember, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. One day soon, a man is going to gallop onto the stage of human history. Satan will directly empower this man called the Antichrist. He will be a political leader. In the beginning, he will expand his empire through diplomatic ventures and subtle peace diplomacy. And in the end, for a short period of time, he will rule the world. He will be the most persuasive and brilliant man the world has ever known. He will also be the most wicked and diabolical. His meteoric ascendancy and reign will be short-lived, a matter of only a few short years. This man, who is the enemy of God's people, will be directly energized by Satan. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Perhaps more than a hint of the method of this future, direct empowering of the Antichrist by Satan is given in the events surrounding the betrayal of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. The Antichrist will be indwelt by Satan himself. The Antichrist is coming and he will rule over a revived Roman Empire. This coming empire is called by some a Western Confederation of Nations. The book of Revelation speaks of seven kingdoms that will arise throughout history. The common denominator of all of these empires is that they would oppose Israel. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. The five that were fallen all of which opposed Israel are these, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media, Persia, and Greece. The sixth, the empire that still existed in John's day, was Rome. However, he foretold a seventh nation that would arise. That seventh kingdom would come out of the geographic boundaries of the Roman Empire. It would persecute the Jews, but its duration would not last long. It is out of that demise seventh kingdom would not last long. It is out of that demised seventh kingdom that the personal antichrist will arise to revive the ancient Roman Empire. It has already been noted that the antichrist will be empowered by Satan, but more than that, he will arise out of the seventh empire, which lasted for a little time and was, as were its predecessors, a persecutor of the Jews. To those facts must now be added the truth that the Antichrist will literally be the raised ruler of the seventh kingdom that lasted a little while. As such, he established the eighth, your revised Roman Empire. He will be a recognizable person who previously has ruled. The present scenario is menacing. Israel is surrounded by predominantly Arab Muslim nations with a population numbering in the hundreds of millions. By contrast, the Jewish population of Israel is less than four million. They are a small island in the midst of an ocean of hostility. For Israel, the ongoing wars and essential military preparation have wearied her physically, drained her emotionally, and taxed her economically. But still, she has not called out to her God, the Holy One of Israel. But don't worry, the Bible makes it clear that Satan himself will be expelled from heaven. 
at precisely the middle of the 70th week of Daniel. He will be cast to the earth. His sphere of influence will then be limited. Of that future conflict in heaven, the word of God states, the great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray, he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Spiritual preparation for what is coming does not have the luxury of awaiting a more convenient time. Believers must gird up the loins of their minds now. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Just prepare as the five of the ten virgins who brought extra lamp oil. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Many of us will feel afraid, afraid of giving up everything to follow God, afraid of death, Afraid of the day God returns. What should we do at this moment? Just pray for the faith in God and always be ready for his return. God, we acknowledge our human weakness and our fear of surrendering everything to follow you. We ask for your strength to let go of our attachments to worldly things and to trust in your plan. Help us understand that in losing our lives for your sake, we will find true life in you. Grant us the courage to relinquish our fears and follow your path with unwavering faith. Lord, as we await your glorious return, we ask for the wisdom to be prepared at all times. Help us to be vigilant, living each day in accordance with your will. Grant us the grace to keep our lamps burning, our hearts open, and our faith strong. We long for the day when you come back and we want to be ready to meet you with joy and not fear. Dear Father, in a world filled with uncertainties and anxieties, grant us your perfect peace. May we find solace in the knowledge that you are in control and your return will bring everlasting peace and redemption. Help us to uh, fix our eyes on the hope of your second coming, filling our hearts with assurance and driving away fear. We place our faith in your unfailing love. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to be sacrificed for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for paying for my sins. Jesus, you are my savior. I have no fear of death because I believe in the Son, Father, and the Holy Spirit. We also need to pray for our brothers, those poor people who are facing the painful conflict. Father, I am praying for the innocent civilians in both Palestine and Israel. I can't believe that in the 21st century. People are still fighting like pagans instead of resolving their conflicts by talking and finding a middle ground. We haven't learned anything from history. At the end of the day, the only people suffering will be the innocent kids and widows who had nothing to do with the politics. Lord, may the hearts of those in conflict find solace. As we pray for peace, let hatred's fire extinguish. In the midst of strife, 
we seek a common ground to heal the wounds and let understanding abound. May a path to reconciliation brightly shine and let the blessings of peace be truly thine. In troubled times, we look to a future so vast, hoping for peace and harmony to forever last. All believers are calm because they trust in the Lord. And we know how this story will end. Christ is in control. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for Israel and all people for peace. But evil must and will be destroyed. We are living in unholy times. All good people must stay together. God bless all. When you are watching this video, I believe that you have also prepared your soul to receive the Lord and his return. And also prepare a heavy soul to face to Antichrist. Please pray with us by leaving an amen in, in the comment section below. With all sincerity, I believe your prayers will reach the Father. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to join us in the upcoming prayer hours.